Hello, this is News Now, reaching you live from Ibran TV News Studios in Lagos, Nigeria. Coming up. Apprehension mounts as President Muhammad Buhari goes into self-isolation after UK trip. After seven years of waiting, President Muhammad Buhari finally signs petroleum industry bill into law. Firefighters in northern Morocco battle forest blazes as North African Kingdom swelters in heat wave. After months of political turmoil, Malaysia's Muhyiddin Yassin steps down as Prime Minister. Hello again, and thanks very much for joining us on News Now. Here are stories making headlines this hour. I'm Michael Nath. President Muhammad Buhari has said the construction of highways, railways, and the creation of jobs, not military force, is the key to ending terrorism in Africa. The president made the comment in an opinion piece published in the UK Financial Times on Sunday. The piece, titled Africa Needs More Than U.S. Military, aid to defeat terror reflected on the state of global terrorism in light of the withdrawal of u.s troops in afghanistan according to president buhari the threat of terrorism now burns fiercely in africa to combat terrorism the president said what africa needs most for the u.s is a comprehensive partnership to close the disparity between our economic and demographic growth President Buhari has gone into self-isolation to observe the COVID-19 protocol required of anybody who comes in contact with a virus-positive person. The self-isolation commenced after the president and officials who accompanied him on his 18-day trip to the United Kingdom were tested for COVID-19 on his return. This follows his contact with officials of Nigeria's High Commissioner in the United Kingdom, as some of who have tested positive for COVID-19, and their positive test led to the closure of the High Commission facilities for 10 days, beginning on Thursday. Confirming President Buhari's self-isolation, Senior Special Assistant on Media and Publicity, Mal Malam Garba Shehu, said it is an observance of the Nigeria Center for Disease Control as guidance. Uh, Governor of River State, ESM Wiki, has urged the People's Democratic Party to challenge the defection of the Governor of Ebony State, David Umahi, and Governor of Cross River, Ben Ayede, to the All Progressives Congress, APC. He has also enjoined the PDP to also challenge the defection of former PDP members, National Assembly and State House of Assembly in both states to the APC. Governor Wiki, who said this in Port Harcourt, stressed that the time has come for the judiciary to make a final pronouncement on the incessant defection of governors and lawmakers from one political party to another. Come. Now the judiciary must have some education to make a final pronouncement on this issue of defection. And that would go a long way to strengthen our democracy. Because if we do not take action, you will find out a situation where you have to have a one-party state. And that will not be good for our system, for our democracy. And so I have encouraged the People's Democratic Party, they must file a suit against the governor of Ebo State, David Mahi, and the governor of Cross River State, Ben Ayari, for defecting to the All Progressive Congress without any reason preferred as provided in the Constitution or any other enabling law. So, what PDP, is, what PDP is looking for is not just that they want to reclaim the seats, but that a pronouncement must be made by the judiciary of this incessant defection. After years of uncertainty, uh, President Muhammad Buhari has signed the Petroleum Industry Bill 2021 into law. This was contained in a statement by his special advisor on media and publicity, Femi Adishna, on Monday. 
working from home owing to a five-day quarantine as required by the Presidential Steering Committee on COVID-19 after returning from London Friday, August 13th. The President assented to the bill Monday, August the 16th and his determination to fulfill his constitutional duty. The ceremonial part of the new legislation will be done on Wednesday after the days of mandatory isolation would have been fulfilled. The Petroleum Industry Act provided legal governance, a regulatory and fiscal framework for the Nigerian petroleum industry, the development of host communities and related matters. Now, Traders Welfare Union of Nigeria, Edo State Chapter, have dragged the leader of the Edo State Market Women Association, Madam Blaki Omoregi uh, Ogyame, uh, before the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, over 100 million naira lajes. Uh, President of the association, Loki Urupe, in a petition, has asked uh, EFCC to weigh in. To Edo Market Women, 100 million era was given to one Madame Blackie to share for Edo market women in the three, three senatorial districts. In these three senatorial districts, to my best of knowledge, nobody benefits from this money Edo state government give Edo market women. And that money is a taxpayer's money, it's not a private money. So we are calling EFCC to enter investigation, to call Madam Blackie and call the Traders Welfare Union. Let Madam Blackie come and explain how many women traders that benefit from this hundred million in our three senatorial district. As we speak today, sir, this is the petition here that we want to submit to EFCC. Our demand is very clear. The people that benefit from that hundred million we want the statement of account where it transferred the money to these traders. At least four workers of Lee Engineering Company have been confirmed dead after a gunman ambushed them on Monday morning in the Asa community in the Ohajiegbema local government area of Imo State. The oil workers were on transit to the oil plant in the Asa community when the hoodlums opened fire on them. While four died on the spot, others were severely wounded with gunshots. A village source told our correspondent that the oil plant in the community was under construction by the oil company. The national president of uh, Congress of Ohaji Youths, Emmanuel Goji, also confirmed the attack. Now, Bornu State Governor Baba Gana Umar Azulum says repentant Boko Haram fighters have put the state in what they called two extremely difficult situations. The governor spoke at the weekend in Obama and Goza, where he also addressed military officers and community leaders. He said the situation required diverse stakeholders, including representatives of attacked communities, uh, to work together and review the merits and the demerits of this surrender uh, to enable them to agree on a framework for a permanent solution. Zulum traveled to Ugoza and Bama local government areas for humanitarian and developmental activities before addressing military commanders at the brigades in Ugoza and Bama, as well as community leaders at the palaces of the mayor of Ugoza and Shehu of Abama. Uh, the governor delivered the same message in both towns. Now, the governor, however, promised to engage in high level consultations with President Muhammadu Buhari, the service chiefs, resident security heads, among others. Now, three persons have been rescued after gunmen on Monday kidnapped 15 students and four staff from the College of Agriculture and Animal Science in Bakura, local government area of Zamfara State. The spokesman of the Zamfara Police Command, SP Muhammad Shehu, confirmed the development to journalists in a statement on Monday following a visit by the Commissioner of Police, Zamfara State Police, uh, CP Ayuba N. Elkana, to the scene of the incident. He explained that the police operatives, while on extensive bush cunning, uh, the surrounding areas rescued three staff 
who will be uh, deprived and uh, medically examined before being reunited with their families. The Commissioner of Police, while at the school, held an emergency meeting where he assured the school management and the reactions that the police command, in collaboration with the other security agencies, especially the military, is employing various search and rescue strategies in order to ensure the safe rescue of the abducted students and staff currently in captivity. Now, governments and stakeholders have been tasked to bring the long-term abuse of oil communities in the Niger Delta by multinational companies to an end through sustained advocacy and litigation. Experts believe the various communities have been exploited and robbed of their natural resources because those who ought to protect the people and bring the polluters to book have become complicit in the suppression and oppression. Shell eventually accepted in court to settle with the people, with the community. After 30 years of litigation, uh, to some of us, that was significant because it, it sends a very strong message that the polluters would not escape judgment and that the people should not give up in the struggle for justice. It also sends a, a, sends a message to the government that government must depend, defend the people, that government should put in machineries to hold polluters accountable and to hold itself also accountable when it is the one that is causing the problem. We believe that oil companies should be made to put down a hefty deposit before they, they carry out any kind of activity so that where there's an accident, or an incident, there will be ready resources to tackle that problem. For the same reason, we believe that government should at this time demand that the oil companies contribute a certain amount of money, not less than 100 million US dollars, into a pause that can be used to extend the Ogoni cleanup to the entire Niger Delta. If we don't do this now, we're going to end up with a stranded Niger Delta, with oil companies running away offshore and leaving all the mess with the people. This is unacceptable. You're watching news from iBrand News Studios here in Lagos. We'll take a commercial break now. African news now. Firefighters in northern Morocco are battling to put out two forest blazes. Our forestry official said Sunday as the North African country swelters in a heat wave. He said firefighting planes were being used to tackle the conflagrations which had already destroyed some 200 hectares, that's 500 acres of forest. Several parts of the North African kingdom have been uh, seen temperatures of up to 49 degrees Celsius, according to weather authorities. Now, Morocco joins several other Mediterranean countries that have seen forest fires in recent weeks, including neighboring Algeria, where at least 90 people were killed in wildfires last week. Special forces from the United States uh, will, will soon deploy to uh, Democratic Republic of Congo's rest of east to gauge the potential for a local anti-terrorism unit to combat 
Islamist uh, violence. President Felix Chisekedi has said on Sunday. The Special Operations Forces arrived in Congo's capital Kinshasa on Friday to conduct an assessment of a future Congolese counter-terrorism team, U.S. Ambassador Mike Hammer said. Chisekedi said in a statement on Sunday that the troops would be uh, provided uh, with support to the army in their fight against terrorism and to the uh, guardians of the uh, Virunga and uh, Garamba national parks which have become a sanctuary for terrorist forces. Now, foreign news. Haiti's hospitals were swamped on Sunday by thousands of injured residents after a devastating earthquake the day before killed at least 1,297 people as authorities raced to bring doctors to the worst hit areas before a major storm hits. The 7.2 magnitude quake on Saturday destroyed thousands of homes and buildings in a Caribbean uh, national uh, nation which is still uh, clawing its way back from another major Tebla uh, 11 years ago and is uh, reeling from the assassination of the president last month. Now, southwestern Haiti, before the brunt of the blow, especially in the region and, in the, and around the town of Le Cais, Haiti's uh, civil protection agency said the toll from the disaster had climbed to 1,297 and the hospitals that were still functioning were struggling to cope as some 5,700 people were injured. Malaysia's Muhi Din Yassin stepped down as Prime Minister on Monday after months of political turmoil culminated in the loss of his majority. But his resignation is likely to open another chapter of instability in the absence of any obvious successor. Muhi Din's resignation ends a tumultuous 17 months in office, the shortest stint of a Malaysian leader. Uh, but hampers efforts to reboot a pandemic-stricken economy and curb a resurgence of COVID-19 infections. The Southeast Asian nation's king appointed Muhyiddin as the caretaker prime minister until a new one is found, but did not set a timeline. Now, King al-Sultan Abdullah ruled out uh, elections because of the pandemic, saying he would inv invoke the constitutional power to appoint a prime minister he believes is likely to command a majority. Up next is business news. Hello, welcome to Business News. I am Frank Omalape. And now the International Monetary Fund says Nigeria's foreign liabilities has gone up to 187.36 billion US dollars, while the country's foreign assets amounted to 102.15 billion dollars as of December 2020. The foreign assets are the investment securities owned by the Nigerian government companies or Nigerians in foreign countries where foreign liabilities are assets earned by foreign government, corporations and individuals in Nigeria. This places Nigeria's net international investment position, which is foreign asset, less liabilities at minus 85.21 billion US dollars as of December 2020. And away from there now, the foreign exchange reserves in Nigeria have continued to decline after rising to 33.59 billion US dollars, the highest level in more than a month. According to the Central Bank of Nigeria, latest data for its reserve, which fell to a record low of 33.09 billion US dollars on July 12, had gained 500 million US dollars in almost a month to close at 33.59 billion dollars on August 10. The CBN data showed the reserve, however, declined to $33.58 billion in August last week. And away from there now, the House of Representatives Committee on Finance today has begun an eight-day public hearing on the 2022 to 2024 median term expenditure framework and fiscal strategy paper. To appear before the committee and heads and officials of federal government ministries, departments and agencies totaling 83 of them all. 
The committee is to host ministers of finance, budget and national planning, Zainab Ahmed, minister of state for finance, budget and national planning, Clement Ike, and the right to general budget office of the Federation, Ben Akabwezi, accountant general of the Federation, Ahmed Idris, and director general, debt management office, Patience Uniha. Some of the ministries expected to appear today include the Nigeria Customs Service, the National Insurance Commission, the Federal Airport Authority of Nigeria, the Nigeria Electricity Management Agency, and the National Space Research and Development Agency. And now the Minister of State for Budget and National Planning, Clement Agba, uh, Clem Agba rather, has disclosed that a total of 34 billion uh, naira has been set aside by the federal government for the development of rural roads, which additional 17 billion are added to it under the sustainability planning. I explained that the above figures added with the 8 billion naira from the 2021 budget for rural development brings the total to 59 billion naira. The minister made this known in Benin City, Edo State Capital. He noted that community development, a primary responsibility of the sub-national government and not the federal government alone. And in the meantime, shareholders in Nigeria's capital market have expressed concerns as unclaimed dividends by last weekend's uh, revelation rose to 170 billion era. They fear the funds may be appropriated by Nigeria's financially challenged a federal government. This is even as they urge the Securities and Exchange Commission to quickly innovate new strategies to reduce the figure. Outside Nigeria now, stocks and U.S. equity features slip Monday and treasuries climb on concerns that the economic recovery from the pandemic is slowing as a fast spread in Delta virus strain hampering reopening. Japanese shares lead in having demand support the yen amid expectations a virus state of emergency in some regions, including Tokyo, will be extended. The latest China retail sales and industrial output data show activities low more than expected with virus outbreaks are the new risk. S&P 500, Nasdaq 100 and the European equity contracts retreated as well. Investors are also tracking alarms in Congress as the Taliban take contract of Afghanistan in the vacuum left uh, the departing U.S. and NATO forces open. And our oil prices fell more than 1% on Monday, dropping for a third session as government imposed restrictions on mobility to counter the spread of the Delta variant, raised worries about a recovery in fuel demand. Brent crude was down 80 cent or about 1.1% at $69.79 a barrel in early trade after urging lower last week. The International Energy Agency last Thursday said rising demand for crude oil reversed course in July and was expected to increase as at a slow rate uh, over the rest of 2021 because of the surge in COVID-19 infections from the Delta strain. Well, and that's all we have time for in business news at this time. Many thanks for watching. I am Frank Komalape. It's back to you now. Many thanks, Frank. Uh, coming up next, Sport Business with Jidechi. Welcome to the Sports Update. I am Jude Chichi, the Asian Now Watford's shirt sleeve sponsor for the 2021-2022 season will reportedly be the memes-based um, cryptocurrency Dogecoin. According to The Athletic, the deal will be worth around 700,000 euros, falling shy of 1 million euro sponsorship deal which the Premier League club inked with its previous sleeve partners, Bitcoin in 2020. The was organized in collaboration with Watford's FC's main shared sponsor, Stake.com. Dogecoin started as a joke currency in 2013 and is based on the popular meme image of Japanese Shiba Inu dog. 
I'm moving on to other sporting stories. World Boxing Federation Super Featherweight Champion Ridwam Oyetola Scorpion has expressed his readiness about the scheduled fights between him and Ghanaian boxer Emmanuel Menza. He made the revelation at the unveiling of the second international standard boxing ring in Ibado. Speaking with journalists during the unveiling of the boxing ring, Mr. Adeshino Araoye advised parents to embrace boxing game as it provided jobs and reduced youth restiveness. And it's a game that should be encouraged by all and sundry. And people have made names through boxing. They have made a lot of uh, millions of uh, uh, dollars, Naira, from boxing. And it's going to have a good impact even on our economy, if we can promote that. There is a lot of youth uh, restiveness, there is a lot of uh, youth unemployment, and we can engage these Timmy youths. Uh, you know, get this for the state. This is the second one in the whole of the Federation, and then uh, the first of its kind in the whole of Africa. So now we'll be hearing uh, uh, people from Ibadan, from one area or the other, fighting each other. Uh, illegalism here and there. That we can actually convert all this illegalism to a great profession as far as boxing is concerned. So and that's all for now from the sports desk. Michael, it's back to you. Thank you very much, Jidechi. Now, to the business side of entertainment. Now, despite concerns, the Delta variant would keep uh, movie girls at home. Uh, Ryan Reynolds' see a free action comedy. A free guy had a better than expected start at the domestic box office. The movie from Disney and 20th Century Studios collected $26 million from 4,165 North American theaters, giving its production budget above $100 million. Those ticket sales wouldn't be much to celebrate in pre pandemic times, but isn't a bad result as a plague sweeps the globe. Overseas Free Guy amassed $22.5 million from a global tally of $51 million. Uh, many high-profile films that uh, premiered during the pandemic, such as Marvel's Black Widow and the Seaside Squad, were available on streaming platforms on the same day as their theatrical debuts. In the case of Free Guy, 59% of opening weekend ticket buyers were made and uh, nearly 80% were above the age of 18. Popular Nigerian actress Funke Akindele has, has been named as one of the stars on Instagram's highest paid influencer list. Uh, the movie star ranked number 70 ahead of uh, her counterparts in the Nollywood industry with earnings of over 34 million naira per post. Now, some of the Nigerian stars Funke Akindele beat on the list include Mercy Johnson, uh, Mercy Aiwe, Adeswa Etom, and more. Now, the list made sure to show how much Instagram personalities earned per post. And Funke Akindele, who has over 13 million followers, is set to earn 34.38 million naira per post. Mercy Johnson, who ranked 90th with 26.8 million naira per post, and Mercy Aiwe at number 92 with 25.2 million naira per post. And that's why a Tommy Wellington uh, were also listed at number 136 with earnings of $29,700 and at 10.9 million naira per post. An ex BB Niger star and actress Bisola Ayola at a number 160 with 7.8 million naira earnings. And with that, we wrap up news now uh, which came to you from the studios of ibrand tv here in lagos thanks very much for watching i am michael nath